This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is an online mentoring program that teaches people with no experience how to create a real profitable online business and e-commerce. I have been working with Ryan at Change for a few years now and attended many events and got to meet the amazing community of like-minded people. These guys are the best of the best. The support these guys offer is personal, no bots or employees, there's no experience needed, but like anything in life, it takes time as it's a real business with real results. For more information, go check out Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help build a successful business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. And boom, we're on. Today's guest, we've got Michael King. Michael, how are you? Fine, thing. Fine. You're known as Shadow in the Smash It Show Gladiators. Yes. I was a massive fan of it myself. You were sacked from it over the last few years. You've been in a prison. But now today, you, you want to tell things from your side and just basically just tell your own story, which is which is all, which is what these podcasts are all about. First yeah. and foremost, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. How are you feeling today? I'm <clears throat> getting used to being out. Uh, it's been only been about a month and a half now, but you know, getting used to it. Yeah, good. Before we get into it, I always like to go back to the start of my guests, get a bit of understanding about you, where you grew up, and how it all began. Uh, I, I grew up actually in New York. Um, my, my mother lived in New York. I uh, went there when I was about 14, uh, high school there, junior college. Then I came back uh, to England. <clears throat> I was playing American football, so I was weight training. So when I came back, I started to compete in bodybuilding shows and teenage shows. And worked my way up, really, until I became, uh, I just about to get my professional card, and I got the job as a gladiator. What, yeah. was, what was school like in America? Oh, it was a bit wild. Was that? Yeah. Um, Where about in New York? In the Bronx. I lived in the Bronx. Uh, 167. The Grand Concourse. Yeah, I went to school in uh, the end of the train ride. It's like two o five or something. Yeah, Dewitt D- D- Clinton. It was a boys' school. Yeah. yeah, how's that being at an old boys' school? Uh, yeah, it was a bit weird. I mean, there was a girls' school just down the road called Science. Never did get to pop around there, but uh, yeah, that was a bit weird, especially coming from London to go to a boys' school in America. Yeah. So you were wanting to be American football and NFL. Uh, I did try for the NFL. I uh, did try as a free agent. I didn't go to uh, college to get picked as a on the draft or anything. So it would have been as a free agent. I remember going out to Texas Stadium. It took me two days to drive there from LA, and uh, for the trials in the stadium for free agents, people that don't come from college, just come from the street. And um, I had to run a few drills. And I remember the coach turned around to the other coach and said. His hips are too stiff and he has no hand coordination. Next, <laughs> you know, I've been there all day. It took me two days to drive there. And that's all that's all I got out of it. Just ruthless. Yeah, ruthless, yeah, yeah. So yeah. much money involved yeah. in the NFL. Yeah. It's one of the highest sure. sports on the planet. But did that deflate you as a young no, boy? No, no. I ended up coming back to Europe. I played uh, six months in France, in Nice, uh, Sweden, Stockholm, Frankfurt in Germany, played American football uh, as a player coach. Um, and then when they started the league over here, I was too old for the league. I think it was on the 25 or something like that. Um, got back into bodybuilding. Like I said, I was just about to get my professional card. And I applied for the job as a gladiator and went from there, really. 
What was it like applying for the Gladiators? Because it was an unknown show. No uh, I, used to, watch, it I used to watch the American program on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. um, so you were already known to what it was about? Yeah. Yeah, it's an American concept. So it used to be on like two, three o'clock in the morning on a Friday. I used to watch it. And um, they said they were looking for people to start a new program. So I just applied for it and went out to an army, army barracks in Woolwich, I think it was. So it's always you, I remember, Shadow, Jet... Wolf. She was fucking beautiful. Yeah, yeah, Wolf was yeah, the kind of free yeah. names. I used to love it. Saturday night, yeah, I was thinking yeah. the lottery was on, and Gladiators, yeah, there was a lot of Saturday yeah. night, I used to love it. Yeah, kind of you yeah. sitting there yeah. with your mum and dad <laughs> watching shit TV, but yeah. Gladiators was always the one because it was exciting. Yeah, yeah. The beautiful girls as yeah, well. The girls yeah. were fucking stunning. Yeah. Muscly men, strong, sure. just thinking, I want to compete in that. And sure. what was it going through? What was it like? Did, how, what was it like? Actually, did you have to pass any tests to become a gladiator? Um, like I said, we went out to army barracks in Woolwich. Got through, went through a, a number of exercises in the gym, outside the gym, with the PT instructors there, and that's how they picked us. Really, yeah. How many people? Uh, well, there was thousands of people that applied for the job throughout the country. But the day I went there, I think there was about fifteen of us, fifteen guys, fifteen girls. Then they picked from that. How many eventually got picked? Uh, six guys and six girls. And did you know how sh big the show was going to be? Because it was no, like 15 no, million, 20 no, million I don't, I don't, at the weekend. I don't even think LWT knew how big the show was going to be. In the first year, um, we were getting like £500 a show. Uh, in the second year is when it blew up and they realised how big the show was going to be. But um, yeah, I don't think they even realised how big it was going to be. Was that, oh, you were getting paid 500 quid? Yeah, show. yeah. Whereas, like, the American gladiators, they get they get repeat fees from every state that shows it. They get merchandise rights. We didn't get no merchandise rights. We didn't get no repeat fees. We just got a flat wage per show. And obviously, you do personal appearances and stuff like that during the month. You could earn two, three grand a month. Um, opening shops, doing signings, that, that type of thing. But no, we didn't get no merchandise rights, no repeat fees. It's fucking slavery, though, when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Compared to like compared to the Americans, and we took that concept from the Americans and and totally blew it up. You know, the, the, I think they did their thing in front of a thousand people in front of a cardboard cutout, whereas we got it in the arena. Because I'm sure there used to be like little figures now, the wrestlers yeah, yeah. and stuff. So yeah, yeah. yeah it's you, all there's no merchandise. No, yeah. At that, it, probably at that time, though, it's like actors or people writing books. They get musicians. They all get a very small percentage. It's the big yeah. wigs who make all yeah. the money. Yeah. But did you ever complain when you were getting 500 quid a show um, when the show became so popular? No, not in the first year, obviously not. You know, so many people trying out for the show and if you didn't like the contract, then you didn't sign it. And there's a number of people that were waiting for the job. In the second year, they moved it up to 750 a show. Still, you know, at the end of the day, it was nothing compared to the American show. What the Americans get, rather. And, um, don't forget, they did their thing in front of a thousand people. In a arena that looked like a cardboard cutout, whereas ours was in the NEC, 10,000 plus twice a day. You know, it was uh, big numbers. You were doing two shows a day? Yeah, yeah. About 14 hour a day. Did that ever make you question it, though, thinking, shit, man, I should be getting more, or were you just happy to be part of it? Uh, like I said, no one made any waves. Um, if you didn't like the contract, you didn't sign it. You know, simple as that, really. What was the first show like? The first show of the first season? No, it was good. Good, it was exciting. How was it with the male and the females? Was that everybody having a good time or was it just a, a kind of uh, cutthroat? No, everyone was having a good time. I mean, you know, we, were, we were brought together for two weeks to film in Birmingham. Stayed at the NEC. No, it was good. It was good. How much training were you doing for it? Because everybody, everybody <laughs> well, was get, in great shape. You get, you get uh, two weeks to practice on the new apparatus that come out, the new games that come out. Um, contestants only get a week before they have to start filming. But we get, we're there for two weeks prior to them coming. Uh, so you've got time to get used to the games and stuff like that. How many different games were there? Uh, wow. Well, how many different games were there? There was Sky Trap, The Jewel, The Pyramid. Uh, the big metal balls, I can't remember what they were called. Yeah. Uh, gauntlet, Powerball, uh, Hang Tough. That was, that looked hard one when they're swinging. When they're swinging, yeah, when the 50 rings. I used to love watching yeah. that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a few games. 
What was your speciality? What games? I, I was known for the duel, which is the only one-on-one -on -one game where they fight with the sticks. sticks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just knocking people off. Yeah, basically, yeah. Did yeah. you ever get put off yourself? Uh, Gary Mason, he stepped across and pushed me off one time, but that's that's about the only time I, I came off there. Did yeah. you get the victory for that? Uh, no, it was a Scottish guy who was a referee. That's it, that's it. Gladiators, are you ready? Yeah. Well, that was that yeah, fucking bad Anderson. bastard. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He had like, <laughs> that accent was good for it. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's like the guy, um, Michael Buffer, hmm. um, it says, let's get ready to rumble. The Gladiators was known for that as well. Gladiators, yeah. are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Was it, the see if you ever got a defeat, was that, listen, it's only a game show, or did you take it personal? I mean, I've never been defeated in three so, years. No, except for when Gary Mason pushed me off. But no, I've never been defeated. So did you not do any other ones? Was you just yeah? I did. Did hang tough. Uh, did the gauntlet. Did powerball. But no, it was it. Those those are all team games where you play with more than one person. So mm -hmm. the duel is the only one where it's one on one. <clears throat> but the rest of the games, they're uh, you know, they're team efforts. <clears throat> so how long did you do? Was it three seasons? Yeah, the first three seasons, yeah. What was the second season like for you? Was that a big improvement? Uh, more fame? More attention? Yeah, we didn't realise, like I said, we didn't realise in the first year how big the show was going to become. Um, I remember going to Tesco's or somewhere like that one, type, one day with my wife and uh, being totally mobbed. You know, then realising, wow, you know, <laughs> we are famous, like, you know what I mean? Oh, you're getting used to this fame thing, yeah. Yeah, because it's not like now where everybody's got social media and you can be yeah. TikTok famous and sure, Instagram sure, famous. Sure, then sure. if you were famous, you were sure. famous. Yeah. Because it was everybody only had a TV yeah. to get their yeah. information. Sure. And Glad it was the number one show. Yeah. It was like 15 million, 20 million people yeah. watched on a yeah. Saturday night. Yeah. Which is phenomenal numbers. Yeah, it was big, TV. bigger than Blind Date, bigger than Noel's House Party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a big show on a Saturday night. Folks, that brings back a lot of memories you mentioned in Noel's House Party and stuff. Yeah. So season two, season three, life going great. It was just to be married yeah. then as well yeah. and yeah. training hard on yeah. a hit show. Yeah. It was life perfect. Yeah, yeah. Then? Then uh, I was accused of doing a line of cocaine in a in a nightclub. I used to, well, a restaurant I used to go to, piano bar in the King's Road. Um, they said they had an undercover reporter took took photos of me doing this or doing that. The only pictures they had was my Jeep outside this actual restaurant where I used to go. But um, on the basis of that story, LWT had to let me go. Because now the, you know, the, the program was targeted towards kids between 5 and 15, even though it went a bit higher. But I suppose they cut off their nose to swipe their face, really, to let me go. Did someone stick you in? Well, they, like I said, they, they reckon they had an undercover reporter that said I did a line of cocaine inside this restaurant. Uh, they didn't have no photographs. They all had was my Jeep outside the restaurant. But, you know, at the end of the day, if I don't know you, I'm not doing a line of coke with you. You know, and, you know, so it was all purely fabricated, the story. And um, <clears throat> on the basis of that, LWT had to let me go. On the basis of someone writing an article? Yes, on the basis yeah. of me being accused of doing, doing drugs, yeah accusations there's horrible things the newspapers always say this kill people mm. destroy lives yeah like, whether you're taking gear or whatever listen we get it but you're not doing it in front of kids you're not sure. nobody's seen you doing it sure. and that's the if somebody blatantly caught you like nowadays people have got their cameras yeah, yeah. and you are caught listen yeah. you're fucked you can yeah, put yeah. your hands up sure. was that a hard one was that a bitter pill to swallow because there was no evidence of you taking any no. gear no evidence at all just a uh, story mm. did you get a heads up when the story was breaking? Uh, no, I just uh, got a phone call on a Sunday morning, someone phoning up saying, Jeff, have you seen the news of the world? Have you seen the papers? You know, that's how, and that's how it was on a regular basis, you know. People calling me up and saying, Jeff, you're in the papers again today. Oh, Jeff, have you seen the paper? <laughs> what is it now? You know. Did yeah. you have any negative press before? Before? The, the Coke one? No, not really. I mean, I, I, there were some false accusations. Uh, they said... Uh, I was arrested for handing in a stolen Porsche. Never stole a car in my life. That just came back from burying my dad in Jamaica. Dad's not even Jamaican. He was alive at the time. Underneath my picture, it had uh, the name Michael Costello. Who's Michael Costello? You know, whoever wrote the story disregarded to even find out my real name to put it to my picture. You know, but uh, all kinds of uh, stories that were 
just rubbish, basically. Was there any other gladiators targeted with these sort of stories, or was it just yourself? Uh, just myself. Do you think racism plays a part? Um, I never really, never really looked into it like that. You know, never really sort of uh, paid too much thought into is it a racist thing. Um, yeah, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, because it makes you wonder, though. It makes you question why you then. Well, it does. It does. I mean, I remember mean, Barbara Windsor saying to me, "God bless her." She said to me, um, um, "Good publicity or bad publicity is good publicity as long as people are talking about it." But they never wanted to see me. She said they never wanted to see me have that power again. Because I suppose at the time I was a known person bigger than Frank Bruno you know bigger than a few people as far as Saturday night prime time and, and being known to the general public and um, yeah she said to me that they never want to see me have that power again again is that racism I don't really don't really, don't, really don't, don't know people talk about special clubs and special handshakes and we ever offered to be and so no. these clubs are no. No. Because a lot of people who then get through under the bus tend no. to no. Uh, reject these offers mm. because they just want to be their own person and be on TV. But when, like you were saying, you've got that bit of power and fame. And if you're not dancing to their tune, they yeah. just fuck you off. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's how, that's how it goes. I mean, and there's no one there to uh, to guide you. There's no one there to say to you, okay, this is how you got to be. This is. This is where you should go. These are the people you should hang out with. These are the people you should be seen with. There's nothing. There's nothing like that. You know, it's just it was just. Uh, I've gone from being a, a semi-pro bodybuilder to to this famous person that's on primetime TV, and it's not so much not knowing how to handle it. I handled it pretty well, I think. You know, as far as I, I was an athlete, I was there to show you what a guy like me is going to do to you. Thing was the whole thing was about an, the ultimate challenge providing the challenge for the contestants so they you know they have to fight for their points and yeah i enjoyed it i enjoyed it i suited, it suited ryan did you not have a manager or a pr uh we did have managers well we did have uh managers and prs but they they weren't allowed to get us any work outside of well they used to get us work outside of lwt as your outside agent meeting would, gigs would, and stuff would find you work and get you gigs and stuff like that um once they saw how much money we were making outside of them having control of it they put a stop to it all all work had to go through lwt or all, all promotional work or advertising work had to go through lwt they would get their percentage and they would pay you a percentage so the our agents were cut out of the picture yeah. great <laughs> yeah. Fucking great. Yeah. How long did Gladiators run for? Um, I think it ran for about eight, eight years. How was Big Fashion you and Eureka Johnson? Oh, they were nice people. I mean, I I, I never knew uh never really was into football, so I never knew about John Fashion you being you know I heard about his brother <clears throat> but didn't know too much about him. Uh Eureka, I think I remember her from being a weather girl on the news or something. Uh but yeah, they seem to be nice people. Who did you get on with the most in the Gladiators? Who did I get on with the most? Uh, I think it was all like a tight knit family. I never there was never one person that I got on better with than anyone else. Uh, I was the team leader, so my job is to bring them together and make them work together and <clears throat> have no fear of the camera and have no fear of being in the arena. It's not about us; it's about them. You know, all we're there, all we're there for is to provide a challenge. But once you enter the arena and lose that thought pattern of providing a challenge, and you start looking at yourself, and you don't want to look bad, you don't want to lose games, then that's what separated me, I think, from the rest of them because I wasn't concerned with cameras. My job was to provide a challenge, and I was going to provide the ultimate challenge for you. Where did you get that leadership skills and the confidence? Did the bodybuilding help with that? And uh, I, suppose, and I, suppose, I suppose so. That's a single. That's a singular. Um, gig in itself, bodybuilding is hard work. You know, you, it's all down to you how much you eat, how much you train. Um, maybe yeah, discipline came from that. You know, playing American football, always being around game team sports. Who did you look up to, like Ronnie Coleman and stuff? 
Yeah, no, my, my time was like Arnold. What's well, that? Yeah, Arnold Franco Colombo. I'm 62, oh, fuck, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're age, we're talking 70s, 80s. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, um, 70s, 80s. Yeah, we have to be Arnold and, and yeah, Franco yeah, Colombo. Yeah, yeah. You still look fucking yeah. great. All those type of guys. Yeah. yeah. So that's who you wanted to inspire to be the big uh, Arnold? Oh, yeah. I remember, I remember seeing a, a picture of Arnold in the changing room when I was in high school in America. And uh, I thought, you know, yeah, I. I yeah, that's some of that, you know, who am I looking like that? Mm -hmm. you know, but through through playing American football, I was weight training, so my body just began to grow, so I just kept on training. Because with the gladiators, it says you were kicked off for taking steroids, but looking at the gladiators, nobody's daft, they know who's on the juice. Yeah, it is. Maybe the, not so then now, but I've, you know who's on juice now, yes, but... Yeah. They, 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 they wanted people that look like us. They could only find it in the, the bodybuilding world, the, 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 the fitness world. Uh, they didn't want uh, us looking the same or the idea is looking the same as the contest contestants. Contestants were fit people, you know, swimmers, runners, marathon runners, all that, all that type of uh, Iron Man type of people. Uh, so they wanted the next step up. And so obviously they knew in the first, the first year there was, no, there was no concern about steroids or no concern about us coming from the bodybuilding world or anything like that. They wanted that look. Now the second year comes along and the show becomes so so much popular and it's been uh, scrutinised. They have to start now testing us. We're not athletes. You don't have to test us for for things like that. We're entertainers. But that's how it went. It started to go in that direction, like as if they were treating us as if we were. Yeah, boxers. Or yeah, yeah, athletes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like you say, yeah. you're an entertainer, you're a showman. Yeah, yeah. What's the difference if you're taking juice or sure, not? Sure, Was that just an excuse to maybe have that on the sidelines in case they wanted to get rid of anyone? Um, how they how they, how they they thought, I have no idea. How they used to think, I have no idea. See, even just listening to it, it makes me, I question everything, and I'm yeah. trying to find the angle, why, how, yeah. What, yeah. Why, what was their purpose? Yeah. Because everybody would have been on the juice. You just look how fucking sure, big they were. They were sure, massive. So, sure, so sure. I mean, I think, so I think even some of the girls were on the juice. Yeah, but yeah. Jet, mate, I used to love her. <laughs> I'm sure I had a post. That's cringe. But I'm sure I used to have a poster of her on my wall. <laughs> fucking cringe. Yeah. Yeah. So, what was it? so you didn't get sacked for the steroids? It was for the line of gear in the papers? Yeah. Yeah. Why did they say steroids? Was that to try I think and cover I just, it up? I think they just uh, involved the whole, the whole steroids, cocaine, the whole package together really so what was it like then did you were you thinking it's going to be okay because you were such a high profile name then or, or did you, your world crash instantly uh no my world crashed really um i remember how i had a had a an interview on lwt um a press interview to apologize to my people that i work with and all this kind of stuff and uh, yeah, they let me go. Mm. See, that's what I hate about those apology interviews. You're admitting guilt. And then everybody yeah, goes, ah, well, yeah, they shouldn't yeah, have done it. Yeah. I just think, listen, I never done fuck all. And people can make their own assumptions. It's easier. Hindsight's always a wonderful thing. We always yeah. say that shit. But were you ever thinking, of, why should I apologise? Why should I apologise? Um, because it was only a paper. I suppose, I suppose it was... Uh... Guidance, guidance again you know like you know <clears throat> not being not being asked if i should apologize or not apologize uh right there's a press conference you're gonna explain yourself away or apologize to the people that you know been affected in this was what was it. the feeling like when you got sacked uh did it take time to sink in or yeah it sink yeah in I, used to, I used to have a uh a big G G on the back of my spare tire on the back of the Jeep, and uh, that had to be removed. My shadow number plate had to be removed. I felt like uh, I felt like um, there used to be a program on TV where the guy get is thrown out of the army, and they strip his the pearls off his shoulder, and they break his sword <laughs> and throw him out into the wilderness. And that's that's how I felt. You know that I was just. Um, I wasn't given no opportunity to say, well, do you want to go to rehab? Do you need to go to rehab or, or anything like, or anything like that? It was just gone. Did you have a habit? No, not really. No, no. I mean, you know, in the, the day we used to, 
like I said, it was a 14 hour day. We used to have a dab of speed in the morning after breakfast to get you through the whole day. But no, it wasn't to the point where, you know, man's just losing the plot or anything. How, because that's the thing, fame's a weird thing. Lewis Capaldi, I don't know if you know who he is, a singer, but he's really struggling with his mental health. Scottish kid, unbelievable singer, unbelievable talent. And he's kind of, he's got Tourette's now and <clears throat> he's really struggling. He's put on a bit of weight and it's just the fame side of things. It, it is difficult for people to handle it. Did you handle it okay? Or were you thinking this is, because it's not real. It's a weird little yeah, world you're in. It's, it's a weird little world. Um, uh, I don't know where the transition, where the transition uh, came because I was I was big in the bodybuilding world as well, so I used to go and compete. I used to have a, a lot of attention in the bodybuilding world. Uh, you know, moving over to gladiators now, um, it, yeah, it, it is a different thing being on TV, being in people's living rooms every Saturday night. Uh, that type of fame, like I said, no no one no one um, trains you for that. You know, no one prepares you for it. It's, it's, it's something you just got to take take on and and you deal with it as as you would deal with it. I mean, I've never been a person with a chip on my shoulder or, uh, you know, I am, or do you know who I am sort of thing. Um, I was very humble. I am very humble. So so for me, it was comfortable for me. Yeah, the the fame thing was comfortable for me. See, when you were doing the bodybuilder and then going to Gladiator, did you have to strip weight or stone to stone? No, no. I, I, um, I left uh, the bodybuilding world about 19 stone. I, I, Held that as a gladiator about 18, 18 and a half, 19 stone. Because that's still a, 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 if you're competing with the, the dual thing, with the, obviously with the swinging and stuff, would have been heavier on the hands, the shoulders, mm. obviously the bigger the weight you are. But when the gladiators, obviously, you see bodybuilders and they're stiff. The right, no, I, was seemed, pretty, I was pretty agile. The gladiators seemed to move and glide. Yeah, and yeah. They just, it looked with ease. You yeah. used to watch the contestants and you think, they're shite. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I mean? They looked out of place, some of them. Yeah. There was some of them who, yeah. who could handle it. Sure, but sure. there was some you think they shouldn't even be sure, there. Sure. Because the thing at the end, when I used to try and run up. Travel like, out and was, stuff like that, yeah. That was an excitement. They used to slide down, <laughs> yeah. climb up the wall and slide yeah. down like yeah. well, it. It is a great kind of setup for a show. It was perfect at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, they're doing a remake now, and that no doubt will be popular. So, see when you get sacked, and then the show was running for another five, six years after that. Was it hard to watch? I never then, watched it. I never did watch it myself. Once, I, once I came out of there, I didn't watch it again. Yeah, too tough. No, no, not so much too tough. I was just wasn't going to watch it again. You know, at the end of the day, they, I think they went from like fifteen million viewers to twelve million. That's how many people stopped watching the program when they took me out of it. I mean, there was no, there was nothing no more. There was no, I believe I was the backbone of Gladiators, the serious side of Gladiators. You know, once that was gone, then all you had was the character, which was Wolf and 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 the sexy girl, Jet, you know, and that, that was it. No one else was there really competing or was competitive. I don't believe there was as competitive as the level that I was on as far as competitiveness mm -hmm. so. because if anybody ha has got a habit or addicted to something you could have put went to rehab and says look take six months off yeah come back do another article sure. listen i'm living sure. a clean life sure. i apologize sure. i'll make up for it sure. and then get back on the sure. next season sure. were you ever thinking about that sort of stuff because he seems such a laid back I, I was, guy i was never offered that type of stuff like i said to you you know once that came out they fired me simple as that they, they fired me there was no conversation about do I want to do it? Do I want to go and do this? Do I do I feel like I need help? It was nothing like that. They just fired me. Yeah, and and when I think to myself, there are people out there that have worked that work in the industry, done for drugs, done for this or done for that. They're still working. Yeah, they may have been given the opportunity to go to rehab or whatever. I don't know, but they're still working. Even up to today, you know, there's a number of people that have had all kinds of charges, maybe didn't go to prison, they're still working. Yeah, especially in the 90s as well, the court and stuff was, everybody was on it. 
Everybody was fucking dabbling on it. Even I would say probably more people are doing it now than ever. But the nineties, it was more glorified. Mm. Everybody was kind of a party thing. Lawyers yeah. and Friday sure. night it was kind sure. of people with a bit of money. Sure. Friday night thing, sure. Saturday night sure. thing. So see when you get sacked. What's the what happens with your life then? Being a household name, popular, everybody loving you, making a bit of money. Uh, I went from um, being able to get five grand of alpine equipment just for the sake of taking pictures with the management crew at the NEC Indoor Arena to getting my car fully kitted out with shadow grey leather interior because of the name to not even being able to get a packet of batteries from the shop for free. Yeah, that's 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 how much of a drop it was. Yeah, getting all these things for free, all this promotion and everything, and from the time I got fired, it was like I wasn't even the same person. Did you leave Spyro after that then? Yeah, yeah, I suppose it did. Yeah. Did you ever try and clock back and try and do other shows? Uh, in the office? No, I did. I did a few. Did a few movies, uh, extra extra parts, uh, Mortal Kombat two. Um, uh, some TV shows, Jonathan's Creek, and a few commercials and stuff like that. But no, I just kind of seeing it, finding it so hard to step back in, or to step in on some on some kind of a level that I just kind of moved it away. I suppose. Did you give up? Yeah, I suppose I gave up. Yeah, yeah, gave up trying. Yeah. Yeah, they they seem to be blackballing me everywhere I went. Mm. And you have you never really have you ever really questioned it why? Because you seem so laid back where you've accepted that I'd be thinking something's not fucking right. Well I might think that's not right. Just people throwing you under the bus. Why have they yeah. released that story? Yeah. Why have yeah. they not put yeah. you into rehab? Why have yeah. they totally let you go, took sure. everything off sure. you? Sure. Somebody's sure. had that against you, whether it's sure. jealousy, whether you've sure. listened ruffled feathers on the show where people's not like, whether you have got too powerful, or people are maybe looking up to you, mm. inspired to be you. Yeah. Maybe you weren't playing yeah. Yeah. their game. I suppose, you know, I suppose, I suppose all that was, was going on, you know, you know, <clears throat> I suppose all that was going on. I can only go by what people say to me, you know, is uh, when they was a kid, they used to turn around to their parents and say, mom, dad, am I going to look like that when I grow up, when I get, when I get bigger? I like me. I can I only imagine the amount of people that I've inspired to train, weight train, get in, get involved in sports through seeing me on gladiators. Um, why they why they did what they did, I have no idea. Did any of the other gladiators reach out, or did everything fizzle with them? Oh no, everything fizzled with them as well. Um, were they told to stay back? I think I think they were. Yeah, I told the state back. I had a, I had a dojo in in Middlesex, and uh, I had a couple of them come over and see the gym and everything. And they were told to stay away from the gym, stay away from me in case I got myself in trouble, and they'd be associated with the gym and stuff like that. Just um, you you wouldn't think that we were all close knit at one point. Like I said, nobody wants to make any waves. No one wants to create any problem so they do what they told. Yeah, but that pussies in my eyes. Shit vibes, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. If you've got if you somebody's your brother or sister, no matter if you lose your job, your livelihood get cancelled, you've still got to make a stand. Sure. And I think if we all if they had all stuck together then uh we we maybe we'd have got merchandise rights, maybe we'd have got repeat fees. But like I said, nobody wanted to make waves. And if you didn't like the contract, you didn't sign it. And there was plenty of people that wanted to take your place yeah the power of people need to understand power of the mob power of the people is stronger than anybody yeah and if people yeah. make a stand that's why people go and strike and sure. do stuff to make sure. a stand i'm not taking sure. a shit anymore sure. we want a pay rise we want sure. this and it's not that you're greedy you're not asking for 90 yeah. percent of what the income yeah. is you're just wanting just an extra bone just sure. to get a better sleep and put more food in the fridge sure. feed your kids sure but 500 quid a show if they're getting 10,000 arena twice a, twice a day yeah. sponsors yeah. they're raking in millions yeah. every yeah. week yeah. millions yeah I remember the guy that made the dolls he said um, he made like four and a half million pound in two years selling those dolls mine Wolf's Jets 
the leading selling doll. I mean, forget about just the dolls, the merchandise went across the board. So you can only imagine how much money they were making. Yeah, T-shirts. I'm sure I had the, see, the sticks that you used to hold. I'm sure I got them for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. But it's crazy to think, and it's sad as well, yeah. because people are naive then, and it's okay looking at it now, what you should have done differently. Yeah. But then you're just happy to bone a smash out show. Sure. Sure, yeah, there's that too. There's that they, too. This is a pink thing with people in power, they just love f full control as if they own you. Yeah, nobody owns anybody, but trying to be, do the right thing and people getting paid well is a different ball game because greed yeah. is what controls the world, greed is what poisons men's souls. So, sure. and that's it. The reality of it, nobody fucking cares about you. No, whether you're on 15 million views one night sure. and then. Looking in the bin for scraps and next, nobody yeah. cares. Yeah, yeah. Once you're gone, you're gone. Yeah. And you'll tend to see that if people just turned your back on you, then they were never truly your friends anyway. No, that's true too. Because when the shit hits the fans, it's always the ones who have got your back. Oh, yeah. like few. You're lucky if there's two or three. And yeah. if you've got any more than that, you're you're blessed. But when you're going through the motions then when you got basically cancelled what they call it in this day and age, what did you what did you do with your life then? Obviously you've done a bit of extra work, but were you just kind of deflated? Yeah, totally deflated. Don't forget, I've, I've gone from being there to there, you know, to ground zero. You know, having to strip my car of its labels and everything, and just the uh, yeah, overnight. Yeah, mm. because what mental health and stuff wasn't spoke about then the nineties. No, now it's everybody speaks about mental sure. health. Everybody's struggling. Sure. We get that, but was there anybody you could? Have to, was, was there anybody you could speak to to kind of understand what you're going through or was it just man up get on no, with it yeah man up get on with it yeah yeah when was the first time you went to prison uh September 11th uh, 2011 when their planes went into the towers yeah that's the first time I went to prison what happened why did I go to prison I don't know I think it was uh might have been a shoplifting charge or something hmm was that all over the papers? Yeah, I think every time I've been inside, it's been in the papers, yeah. And what's going through your mind when you're inside? Does it still play in your mind that you're on a hit show and then you've, you're in prison for shoplifting? Uh, no, I think I got over it by then. Um, you know, you always get people that come up to you and say, oh, man, what happened to you, man? You know, you was this, you was that. The day I had a job on TV, that was about it. Is that hard for you when people say that? Yeah, it used to be. Not so much now. I mean, you're talking 30 years down the road, so I've kind of gotten, I've gotten over it now. Uh, and people see me for the first time or they realise who I am and that. Um, they seem pretty excited, pretty, uh, you know, uh, pleased to see me, which is which is good. It's good. Why has it took you so long to tell your story? Uh, I've never had the opportunity, really. I've I've never... Never really learned the access that social media has and Instagram and YouTube and all that type of thing. Like I say, this is the first time I'm doing something like this and, you know, I should have been doing it a long time ago. But... Better later than never. Yeah, but... You seem like a fucking decent guy. You're not here being arrogant and shouting. You seem very calm, collective, and I'm just surprised that you just let it go so long with them and just obviously it's difficult because nothing you can do except move on yeah. nowadays you've got I like to think people get managers and PRs to say look we can do this differently we can do this we can help you make extra money here because if that guy's making four and a half million off of your name then something ain't right yeah that's not normal <laughs> yeah. that's you people yeah. are buying you yeah yeah. It's crazy how yeah. people get used in that industry. Yeah. And then when it's done, the lights are off, it's on to the next show. Sure. Same as people go to Love Island. Sure. It's a bit cringe for me, but 10 years ago, I'd have probably went, I'd have probably went on something like that. But you tend to see a lot of these kids are coming from nowhere, get this mass amount of yeah. fame. Yeah. Can't handle it yeah. because it fizzles. They are forgotten about in six months, yeah. 12 months. Yeah. But they can't handle it here no. because they think they're not good enough anymore. They think nobody loves them sure. or nobody cares. But it's just sure. the way the world works. Everything changes. Sure. Things move on. I think. I think when they when they set out to uh, when they set out to become famous, 
that that's 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 when they take on a whole sort of can of worms. I I never I never set out to be famous. I was just about to turn pro in bodybuilding. Didn't get through the NFL. Just about to turn pro. Used to watch the American program on a Friday night. Saw they were looking for people. I thought, hey, I could have some of that. Yeah, use my use my physique for something like that. But I never had this um, burning desire to be a celebrity to be famous. And I think that's the difference uh, with people that don't end up handling things and those that, uh, you know. Did it feel like another like, rejection from not getting in the NFL to then being right. glad it was then kicked off and then was it a rejection kind of thing where it was a struggle as well or did you just get on with it? I'll try and make something of it. I uh, just try and make something of it really. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of wish that, uh, no, I don't wish. I kind of think to myself, you know, I could have got my pro card. I could have made a good living from being a professional bodybuilder. Uh, instead, I went that way. Um, yes, it did make me famous. Um, but what's come of it? A whole, a whole, a whole ride of destruction and 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 all types of things have, have come of, of me being a gladiator. Why did you never go back to bodybuilding? Why didn't I go back to it? Yeah. All right. Good question. Yeah. Good question. I don't know why I didn't. Just deflated. Yeah. I deflated. think. Just, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think by then coming out of gladiators and doing my little tours in prison and just getting involved in the dark side, just, you know, just with it out, really. Yeah, once you open the door to the dark side, yeah. one negative thing, yeah. you're opening the door to 100. Yeah. Yeah. You know that yourself. You're on that positive path. Sure. Nothing, all the negativity is kind of bounces sure. off sure. you. Sure. But once you open that door, yeah. you, you know how... Yeah fast you can slip down yeah. plus who you were then as well people would have been using you yeah to be around you to sure. offer you this sure, and that sure, sure, just sure, snakes sure. they don't care about yeah. you no. they want you to do this yeah. and that yeah. and they think you think you're if you're on your ass and you're yeah. You, yeah. they're good guys yeah. they're giving yeah. me money yeah. they're not because yeah. you're jeopardizing getting yeah. put back into prison again yeah. 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 and it's mad because it it took me 30 odd years to kind of awaken to they ain't my friends no they want me to do this yeah they want me to don't yeah, like you at all what? Yeah, at that yeah. time it seemed normal the yeah. shit that I was doing to feed the family and provide but you look back and it's madness it's psychotic yeah because that's where the depths of life sometimes can take you yeah I'm looking for outlets and and if you're doing it in a negative way I believe in karma karma comes round and goes okay like, we'll get you maybe not this yeah. year yeah. five years yeah could be ten but, years yeah, but, but we'll, we'll get fucking you. get yeah. you yeah. how many stunts have you done in prison uh God. Quite a few, I'm ashamed to say. Um in the beginning it was, you know, two weeks here, two months here, five months there, that type of thing. And your big one you just was it six years ago? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does it ever sink when did it ever sink into you? It's like a not like a rise and fall, but it's being at the top to then prison as the, the lowest you can go basically. Mm -hmm. I've been in prison myself. It's a fucking horrible place and I would never wish it upon anybody. You know how shit it is and the people in it. The people in it, I wouldn't say they're shit because I've, I'm still friends with people who I was in with and they're mad bastards. I went down a different journey now and I've learnt from it. But it's not that people are bad. They just do bad shit because yeah. of the yeah. pressures of life. Yeah. Did yeah. it ever sink in though that where your life ended up? <clears throat> yeah, I, I suppose, I suppose, yeah. It's had to have sunk in at some point, you know. Where I've thought to myself, my God, you know, I had a life, and now I'm in an AP address, bored shitless, <laughs> you know, and uh, waiting to get a flat, waiting to get a job. Just the norm, really. Yeah. Mm. So you got over six years. What was that for blackmail? Yeah, forced imprisonment and blackmail. And what did you do over three years? Yeah, about three years, two months. What jail were you in? I was in scrubs, uh, for over lockdown, and I was in high down, 
And then I was in Ford, uh, the open prison, DCAT prison. How do people treat you in prison? Do people still know who you are? Oh, yeah, yeah. Once they obviously tell yeah. them the name and the yeah. bachelor. It's yeah. like you say, it was 30 yeah. years ago. Yeah. But it's still, I still see gladiators as only five years ago, sure. 10 years sure. ago. It's not sure. when you says 30 years. I had to do the sum in my head. I thought, <laughs> what? But yeah. it's mad how you know yourself, time flies. Yeah. It's yeah. unbelievable how fast time yeah. goes. So when you're inside prison, because you're still in great shape, you still look the part, you still look good. No, that's right. 61. Shape, yeah. So when you're in prison, how you how do you get through your sentence? Uh, I've, I've always worked um, in prison, uh, some sort of former job. Uh, people have always got on well with me. Uh, always happy to see me, you know, shake my hand. <laughs> Uh, I suppose these are the ones that uh, the guys who grew up watching gladiators, you know, people that remember gladiators. Uh, I suppose I've left a, a fond memory in their minds because, like, you know, I, I get the reaction I, I get today is the same as I was getting 30 years ago when people see me for the first time. Because they're doing a reunion, they're seeing you do it, they've done reunion tours, you were banned to yeah, go and stuff. Yeah, they didn't invite me, <clears throat> no. Yeah, and even then, I used to think to myself, well, why? How can you have a reunion and not invite me? But they never. What have you done, Michael? You shagged the producer's daughter or something? <laughs> <laughs> done something, I have no, like, no idea, mate. A bit of fucking gear no 25, 30 years ago yeah. and you're still getting rejected? Sure, sure, sure. Look at that. Look at that. Now, what do I, what, what do I what paint? What, what do I paint there? What, what, what picture do I paint from that? What am I supposed to think from that? You have the reunion and you don't invite me. So the whole nation is sitting there saying, well, we're, we're shadow. You can't, have, you can't have a reunion from gladiators from the 90s and not invite me. Like when they started to advertise the fact that they're going to start a new show, I think they had Saracen, Lightning and Hunter was on some breakfast TV program. Obviously, they can't mention me. I'm in prison. But uh, the guy that's uh, doing the interview for, the, for this program comes busting out from behind this paper mache wall carrying a pugil stick. Now, if you're carrying that stick, the only thought that a person's going to have when they see that stick is me. So for me, that was satisfying enough that he busted out of that paper wall carrying that stick. So even though I wasn't there, the millions of people that are watching that breakfast TV program, seeing him hold that stick, that know about gladiators, know that's my stick. I'm the only person to break those sticks. I'm the only person to use that stick the way I used it. You know, uh, took it to a new level, the Americans said. You know what I mean? They never used to hit below the waist, and I, I used to hit you all over with, with that stick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised the Americans never took you on. Could you not have went over there and uh, done it? Uh, they, they, they came to us for the international gladiators, but yeah, um, again, you know, don't know why they never took me on. I wish they did. Yeah. yeah. Do you miss that? Uh, no, I don't miss it. Like I said, it's 30 years ago, a long time ago. I got good memories of it you know i still get um my appreciation for being in it when i meet people so i'm i'm good yeah that's the thing as well even though you're getting used you're still living a good life where you're living a dream of millions who watch you're act actually living it you have got the opportunity chances just so happens with the big corporations they just take 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 they just bleed mm. people dry and like i says earlier it's the greed of the world Instead of giving everybody a bone and making everybody, that's yeah. you're doing your part, you're making sure. the show millions. Sure. There's a sure. bonus, or sure. making bonuses and sure. certain, hitting certain views, or you should be getting extra money, but that's just the way I am. So, see, they're making a remake now. Mm -hmm. Does that then bring it all back to the surface and bring back all the emotions where it's because 30 years, listen, for, you've had, for me, yeah, you've had time to for it, no. fizzle, or no. are you, would, would you watch the new show? No, I might watch it just to see how, see what the, how what shit the they guy, are. yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see what they got to offer, but uh, it wouldn't be a, you know, a regular occurrence, but um, yeah, I would just watch it just to see, 
I'd like to see what 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 they what they think they're gonna do now that they didn't do back then. I, I can't. Maybe it's me being a bit biased, but I, I can't see it being as um, popular as the first time around. No, because the thing now is just so much social media and there's so yeah, much YouTube yeah, and TikTok. Yeah, and yeah. There's so many outlets for people sure, to view things. Sure, it's not a case sure. of TV, yeah. five stations. Sure. I think it was four stations. Yeah, that's right, Channel that's, five. Right, that's right. People just had their telly. Yeah. That's now right. I get days, it's, they'll be lucky maybe hit five million viewers, but then I, in this day and age in TV, still great numbers. Mm. Back then, your fifth walking, I think it was over 20 million people used to watch. Only Fools and Horses, sometimes it was 30 million. Mm. It was unbelievable figures, yeah. how much people just loved the telly. Yeah. Used to get the magazine at the weekend and circle out what you yeah, were going yeah, to watch. Yeah, yeah. How's life now? How's life now? Uh Well, life's good. I mean, I've got my health. I've got my kids. You know, my son's in Thailand at the moment. He's uh, does the MMA fighting. Uh, he's doing the Thai fighting. So he's he's been out there for about eight months. My daughter works in PR. She she's big in the game as well. So the kids are doing fantastic. I'm, you know, just stepped out after sitting for three years. Um, Looking to do something, looking to see what I can do, what what's open for me. Mm. What can you do for anybody watching? Like I say, you're a humble guy. You're quite, you're quite. Plastic. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm an art, I'm an artist at heart. I, you know, I I draw. I can draw anything. Um, looking to get into tattooing. I just got me a machine. Uh, waiting for some fake skin to come to get involved in that. But yeah, I'm a, I'm an artist outside of this physical body other than that I train people you know personal trainer so for anybody watching just people with these podcasts people love to help as well a lot of people go do you know what he seems like a good guy I'm going to give him a chance and it's all down to you where you take that chance yeah. listen you could fuck it after a week maybe the gladiators are right to get rid of you nobody knows No. or you can be an absolute workhorse and a diamond in the rough where people go He's fucking unbelievable, that guy. Yeah. There is genuinely good people on this planet as well where people like to help out and offer and people do it a little bit because helping people is, is good for your soul Yeah, as it's well. good for your soul, yeah. So your kids are doing fine, so when you get older, you know yourself, you don't really become as selfish. Your kids are your priority mm. and if your kids are doing well, you're already winning. Yeah. Anything else that comes into your life, in my yeah. opinion, is a bonus. Yeah. But for me, I'm quite... Not greedy where it's money, 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 but greedy just to keep going and yeah. whatever I'm doing. I know it's working. It's like a winning mentality. I'm winning. Yeah. I don't want to ever lose. So I just keep going, going and going. Yeah. But sometimes you can forget the most beautiful things in this is your kids. Sure. Listen, my kids are fucking sure. pests. Sure. It's only 12 and 13. Fight look fuck. And they do my head in. I'm going to lie, but I love them and everything I do is yeah. for them. Yeah. To give them a better life, more opportunities that their dad never had. Yeah. And just... Seeing them happy is what makes me happy. And yeah. As cheesy as it is, but it's true. So your your son's a fighter? Yeah. How old? Hey, 28. They're 20. I've got twins. Uh, they're 28. Mm. Good age. Yeah, good age. Mm. Yeah. So is he ha going to have any fights? Yeah, he's had a few fights out in Thailand. He's he's getting ready to come back here uh, and fight. I think in the uh, end of July, August, something like that, he's going to be fighting. How is it watching your son fight? Yeah, good, good. I I never, I was surprised when he came to me and said he, that's what he was doing. I mean, he's a plumber by trade, guess man. Uh, anytime he wanted to fight, you know, I thought, well, you know, are you as fit as fuck and as hard as nails? You know, because at the end of the day, if you want to be involved in that type of game, you got to have those two things. You got to be as hard as nails, and you got to be as fit as yeah. You know, you got to be. Otherwise, don't don't do it. But he's uh, he's uh, embracing it. He's loving it. Yeah, yeah it's a good life. Loving it. I was actually looking to go last year for six weeks. You can do like a camp in Thailand. We just training twice a day, yeah. eating fruit. Yeah, yeah so he does that's eating right. good. Yeah. But you've got to be tapped. Yeah, every fight that I've yeah. had, there's yeah. something not yeah. quite. Right <laughs> you've got to be tapped. Why, yeah. you, why you want to get punched in the face? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's barbaric. Yeah, but yeah, there's something in it where. When you do it, you, you genuinely do feel like a man. Yeah. If I'm sparring or doing any sort of combat, you feel, it's scary. You always get scared. I don't give a fuck what anybody yeah. says. But after it, it's the, there's a feeling of something that you don't feel from drugs or yeah. success or money. Yeah. There's yeah. just a feeling of, I feel sure. like a man. Sure. There's, 
there's like a purpose yeah. and because it is scary I don't know if it's overcoming fears but those fighters especially MMA they're not right in the head no anybody who wants to do that no. you've got to question their yeah. sanity yeah but even if you see the, the bare knuckle fighters now fucking unbelievable faces out here blood yeah. everywhere yeah. It's just mad. Yeah. The boxers, boxing yeah. seems PG. <laughs> you probably get hit more as boxers, boxers than that. Did you never think about taking up fighting yourself? No. Nah. No. But yeah, because what height are you? I'm six three. But that's big for a bodybuilder, no? Yeah, yeah. I'm same same height as Arnold. Uh, um, they're all smaller now, though. Yeah, they they they're all about. I had five, ten, yotes, five, Yeah, I had dairy mm, mm. yotes on the podcast. I love to bits and. Because you see them in the magazines and the TV, I was expecting a big, massive Most fucking. Yeah. He, he came in, he was shorter yeah. than me. Yeah. I was thinking, fucking hell, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. He won six in a row. Yeah, six it's just muscle off the bone. Yeah. Really. yeah. Do you regret not giving that another crack? Yeah, I do. You know, I'm too old for it now, but uh, in, in order to produce that kind of muscle, but you know, I try and keep myself in shape. Um, but yeah, I do. Reg- I do regret not going all the way when I had the opportunity to go all the way and then again changing that direction from that to that and again not going all the way you know how's your training now oh good good I I, I train twice a day now Um, does the strength go down as you get older yeah strength is there no I don't have the same strength obviously that I had 30 years ago but um, you know I have enough to get through because your shoulders and stuff seem massive. Then, what, what weight are you now? I'm uh, one hundred five, so still no bad. Mm. So, when this, the strength declines a bit and the testosterone drops a bit, the how does that make you feel? Older. Yeah, yeah, it's a fucker, isn't it? <laughs> 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 it's it I yeah. put on two stone, mate, and I, I love running and a bit of boxing, but yeah. and I, I used to play football. But even when I play football now, I play football with Steph for a Monday, and yeah. in my mind, I'm still 21. Yeah. Still feel as yeah. fuck like Maradona. Sure, sure, sure. But it's just, <laughs> everything just seems to fucking be gone. Yeah. I, in my mind, though, I'm, I've got it. Yeah, yeah. But they just. It's mad how yeah. the mind stays young. Sure. The body sometimes lets you know yeah. you ain't that young dick No, kid. that's right, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Wake up all sore the next day, <laughs> groins are sore, calves are sore. How yeah. you tra- why are you training twice a day just to keep... Just to keep busy. Ahead of life? Yeah, just to keep busy. Um, until something comes, James. How long you licensed for? For another three years. Mm-hmm. Mm, maybe that's a scary thought. No, not a scary thought in the sense that I will get any problems or anything, but... Um, you know, you don't, you don't even have to be in any problems to uh, get recalled. Association can get you recalled. Yeah, exactly. Being late back at the fucking AP can get you recalled. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. Mm. A pro, you got a parole officer and stuff? Yeah, well, yeah, I've got... You got to sign in? No, I don't sign in. I, I go to see a probation officer once a week. Um, and I got one of the AP addresses as well, which I see once a week. Yeah. What do you have any triggers? What gets you? What pisses you off? Triggers? Yeah. Oh, I used to have. I used to have triggers. I mean, just being, just from being fucking bored would trigger me off to do something stupid. But uh, no, I, I sort of look at things now as uh, I don't have too much time left. I don't even know how much time I've got left, and I ain't gonna waste it. Uh, I can do shit like that. How do you stay out of prison then? If it's been your kind of life for over ten years, just in and out doing. How do I stay out? What do you mean from now? Yeah, uh, just keeping my nose clean and uh, staying away from bare crosses and people that you know just ain't worth being around. And concentrate on my kids and concentrate on, like I said, salvaging myself. I can't go out like this. You know, I can't go out just as uh, had been druggy. Can't go out like that. That's not me. It's never been me. It's just something that happened, you know. And I'm trying to correct it now. Yeah, but that's all you can do. as correct that. Yeah. When we spoke earlier, that's all we people can make the changes. People mm. can. Do you know what? I fucked up there. I've kind of went became a lost soul for a while. Sure. And out of prison and sure. 
yeah, even just speaking to you, you seem a good guy, and ah, I'm rooting for you, and I hope genuinely everything does work out. But I believe you have got more to give. Yeah, I believe people can be defeated so much and deflated where they don't know how to get back on it and become stronger and pump themselves up because they just feel like a failure. Mm. Rejection just hits them that hard where they think, I'm never going to get another chance. People make their own chances. Keep fucking banging that door down. Eventually yeah. the one will open because yeah. you've got a story Not there too. with Not a hit show, possibly a book and documentaries. Sure. And you've got you've got something. You've got, listen, even though the glad day was the best time you're probably the worst after that, you can still make money from it. But this is what I'm hoping. Yeah. James. Yeah, this is what I'm hoping. I'm, I'm hoping that there is there is some avenue I can go down, you know, being this person. I don't see why not. Yeah, that's, I'm friends with murderers, bank robbers, drug lords. Nobody fucking cares. Yeah. As long as you're doing good now. Sure. If they were still active now, I'd be sure. thinking, look, yeah. I can't speak to you. Yeah. I'm clean cut now. and. Yeah. But I'll give everybody the time of day. If you've done shit in the past, I don't care as long as you've made amends. As long as yeah, you put yeah. your hands up. The first thing is taking responsibility. Sure. A lot of people struggle with. But people would put their hands up and say, do you know what? Drug lords, I fucked up. I destroyed thousands of lives. I, I was just in that game where I was greedy. I was just trying to make money. I never cared about the destruction of others. Sure. But you're making it. You're speaking around schools. You're, you're talking to people not to miss it. Yeah. That's a noble thing. that I yeah. can respect that. Because... Yeah. You don't know who your circle of friends is going to be when you're young. You're just happy to have friends. Sure. So whether they're being dodgy or straight line down the middle making money, you just sometimes it's a luck of the draw with your environment. Yeah. But there comes a stage when adults need to open their eyes and go, I'm not enjoying this yeah. lifestyle. I can yeah. make changes. Yeah. And that's the thing about these podcasts. People will come forward and say, I want to give you a chance because People know who you are. I knew somebody messaged me on Instagram. I knew automatically. I say, I knew, I'll get him on a million percent. I knew who you were. I was a massive fan of the Gladiators. Yeah. So people will give you chances because who you were 30 years ago. Nobody cares about your past. You'll get the odd asshole will go, ah, he's yeah. in prison. You're always yeah. going to get pricks everywhere sure, you go. Sure. But you, because of who you are, nobody cares if you're in prison. Yeah. Everybody knows somebody that's took drugs or been in prison now. Yeah. 2023. Yeah. The world's a fucking mad place. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Does it make are you questioning life a lot more? Because when I was asking you questions at the start, you're just, I never thought about it that way. You never really questioned the dark side of the world, but you see me at a stage of life, I don't want to go like this, and I'm just trying to question it, make better decisions. Yeah, make better decisions. Yeah, be around better people, you know. Being around, being around myself, because I think I lost myself for a long time. So being around myself and, you know, finding finding myself again. Yeah, good yeah, on you. Yeah. How much has exercise helped you stay sane? Sane, uh, a lot, a lot. I don't, you know, I don't feel right if I don't go to the gym. Um, feel lazy and nostalgic, everything. You know, I, I need, I need to be training. Yeah. How's your eating? Eating's not too great. I mean, the, the things are so expensive out here. You know that I can't eat the way I would like to eat, but you know, I'm eating, staying alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's all you can do. Yeah. Stay alive and try to do whatever else you can. Yeah. Really do. It's, uh, but like I say, for anybody watching, is there any way for people who can contact you? Or do you want me to leave an email for people to maybe come through me and I can contact yeah, you? Yeah, but yeah. Or is there somebody I can leave like an Instagram or a, a Twitter? I don't know. I know you're not really clued up with that shit. Uh, but my, my, I'd imagine my daughter has something like that, but she's aware at the moment. But um, but you can ask her then yeah. send it to me. That's what yeah. we're about for a yeah. few weeks anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But... Where do you go forward for the future? Where do I go for? Yeah. Well, like I said, I just, uh, <clears throat> where, where am I now? I'm waiting for my driver's license to appear, to come to me. Uh, I just waited for the city and jail certificates to come from the prison. Uh, hopefully with these bits of paper, I can join an agency and get some work. You know, just slowly, slowly take one step at a time that's all you can do as long yeah. as it's positive steps yeah as long as, it, long as it's positive steps that's right and uh, you know doing things like this and I, I think there's another guy that um, I was introduced to a YouTube man Tick Nick Tick yeah yeah um, he uh, was asking about me coming on coming on that so I'm going to do that as well that's all as it's just getting your name out there again yeah. And people, somebody will go, I'm going to give him a chance. That's all it's about. And we're not, 
mainstream media where things are trying to throw people under the bus. My job was only to let people tell their story from their side. The British public are quite clued up in who's good and who's bad in life. Yeah, yeah. But you can't really fool them. A lot of people, listen, there's stupid people out there would easily fucking fool, but the, the, the vast majority of people, they know who's the yeah. real deal and who's yeah. fake sure. and there's something not sure. right. Yeah, yeah. But you just see my guy who just, who goes through the motions in life, yeah. just doing his thing, but you've had a massive career you kind of lost it. You've lost who you were. But like you says, it's to find out who you are again and yeah. enjoy life. And yeah. we're breathing. Sure. We can smile. We can sure. fucking laugh sure. and just go, do you know what? Yeah. I'm breathing. My kids are fine. I'm <laughs> worrying. Okay, I'm, I'm eating fucking yeah. toast and beans again. <laughs> but I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> and I know people say there's always somebody worse off. But yeah. when you're on the toast and beans, sure. I'm eating well now. So sure. There's times when I fucking struggled. I gambled yeah. everything. I would have to yeah. go to my mum's to get food and whatever. But I think the struggles make you who you are as well. Yeah. Makes you appreciate the finer sure. things. I do think we can take it for granted. But like I say, you can use the fuck ups of the past, being sacked and being in prison, yeah. talking in schools and getting paid yeah. for it. You've got a good story. Sad as well though, because life doesn't just, it's sad that people just not give up, but they just totally forget that life goes on. Yeah. Instead of living on the past, mm. which is difficult, but obviously this is the first time you're kind of speaking out, we've got to touch on it, but yeah. you can make yourself a brighter future. Do you, do you realise that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Do you worry that you could potentially go back? No. Go back where? To prison? Prison. No. I I have no intention on going back to prison, James. None at all. You Good. know. Um, none at all, mate. What about drinking and stuff? Drinking? Yeah. I don't really drink. I might have a beer once in a while, but I don't I'm not drink. Did, was your mental health, did it ever totally go? Suicidal thoughts or anything? No, like nothing that? like that. Nothing like that. I was, I've never been... As low as I've been, I've never um, thought to harm myself or take my own life or nothing like that. It's sad because a lot of people who do, who end up with big TV careers and they, they get sacked or they get cancelled or whatever, they just can't handle it anymore because mm -hmm. they feel as if they've forgotten. Nobody gives a fuck about you anyway when you're on the TV. Yeah. And after the yeah. show's gone, after exactly. three weeks, everything exactly. fizzles. I mean, I, I sort of think to myself now, you know, okay, it was 30 years ago, Jeff. You know, I'm not trying to. Uh, get something I'm not trying to become this person again I just want to uh, find a way of making some form of living or money from being that person uh, you know there's people out there who are less known than myself that create something for themselves so even like with the book um you know, I'm halfway there because I'm I'm known by millions of people. So it's just a matter of me finishing that book and getting it out there. Really, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, of course, because there's people out there's people out there older than you, doing more than you. There's yeah. people out there younger than me, older than me, doing more than me. There's, you see the Paralympics and you're thinking, fuck me, that these people are putting in graft and showing that they're they're not quitting. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we've got all the tools we need to be something. Yeah. But we just don't use them because we, we I don't know if it becomes lazy. There's just so many different factors that yeah. comes into it. But it's just you've still got time. You're still breathing. You're yeah. still fit. You're still yeah. strong. Yeah. You, you can write. A, has had Susie something on who wrote a book sixties and new forty. So you've still got that physique. You're still looking great. You can still how people in, you see people in their forties and fifties and they can't get out of bed. Yeah, they're fucked. After yeah. right, it seeps in. Sure, they stop sure, training. Sure, they stop sure, exercising. Sure. They stop stretching. Sure. So you're you're still ahead in ninety percent of the people yeah. your age. Yeah, people your age are sitting in the pub wasting their life, and it's sure. sad. Maybe they've lost a loved one. You you yeah. see the old guy sitting in the corner yeah. drinking his whiskey. Yeah. It's not that they're bad, but they've just they gave up. Yeah, for me they're. they're the, then there's just sometimes it's better that they're not here and that's a sad reality because yeah. they're just going through the motions sure. of existing yeah. everybody's got something special you can learn play a new instrument learn a new language you can do whatever the fuck you want at yeah. any age Just it's just a case of find, yeah purpose mm. getting up and finding the drive yeah do you feel as if you're getting that drive back though and a bit of purpose yeah well that's 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 why I, I think you know getting in the gym every day is Gives me purpose, gives me, you know, drive to be up. Yeah, keep you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you, are you ever in contact with any of the old cast the gladiators? No. I've I I don't think I've spoken to any of them since I've come out of the gladiator. It's a bit heavy that. <laughs> and you know, and and a few of them have sold sold stories to the papers. You know, I think to myself, my God, is that what you're going to talk about? You know, is that what you're going to say about me? You know, I know so much about all of you, but yet I, I, for the life of me, can't be asked to go and tell anyone about it. Why? Why would I? But then I think to myself, why are you doing that to me? Why are you selling stories? Why Why are you... Uh, Talking about me like that six pints before before going out into the arena. Who drinks six pints of Guinness before going out in front of? Is that all you've got to say? Is that all you could find to say about me? And these are, you know, this is like Cobra. This is the guy who used to make me laugh on Gladiators. But yet, when I, when when being interviewed, this is what he's telling them. I know things about Cobra that, you know, but why why would I? tell anybody just to sell a story or to talk about them I think that says more about your character than theirs oh yeah anybody who sells yeah. their stories is sure. a scumbag sure. in my eyes because sure. you're selling you're selling out oh, because sure. the people who sell stories and do other stories is to deflect away from what they're really hiding mm. and that's the problem standing staunch and going do you know what I know shit about all them but I'm not really going to Listen, everybody's got a right to defend themselves. If people are speaking shit, then you've got to I'll fire your back, don't get me wrong, but there comes a time when you go, do you know what? They're not worth the air. Yeah. They're not worth the space. That's how, that's how I think, James. I they've think they've true colours, they've played yeah, their cards. Exactly. Does that then make exactly. you question that there could have been somebody in your team that's threw you under the bus and, and created the rumours? Listen, if you weren't a fucking saint, you were dabbing speed and doing whatever <laughs> again. But I'd, I'd imagine everybody was involved. Oh, yeah. It just seems yeah. to have been you being yeah. picked out. We need yeah. to get somebody. Yeah. We'll get the captain. We'll yeah. get the leader. We'll sure. get one of the biggest stars sure. on the show. Sure. sure. A lot of jealousy. Sure. Because I don't know. I never, I never worked. I was always a dodgy bastard. Got my first job at 30. And I'd done a PT course. It was like in 10, six weeks. But I never knew it was about the anatomy and the heart and the liver and all, mm. all the mad shit. So I cheated. And then I was six weeks in a personal training job. But what people don't know, I've got good communication skills. So I would pe speak to old John that was sitting in the, the road machine or the bike talking about his kids and his dog yeah. and he'd lost his wife. And then he would come to me four weeks later because he'd go, James, can you train me? Yeah. All these steroids and juice heads. Would, they couldn't, they never had communication skills. Yeah. They'd look in the mirror. So I was in the gym, <laughs> the job six weeks. Six weeks of the job became head PT. Yeah, I never yeah. had a fuck it because I wasn't yeah. in the best shape, but I could talk. So, so I was fully booked. So, and I never felt, I've never felt hate and jealousy. To, maybe if you're out at nightclub and there's always a bit of jealousy because I always had a suit on, always yeah. like very smart, but i just seen people turn. I've never felt it in my, my fucking... They were making up stories, little Chinese whispers, yeah, yeah. because I'd get the job. Yeah. They were doing the job 10, 20 years. I was doing it six weeks. Yeah. Come in, smash that, <laughs> took over. Yeah. I was hiring people and sacking people. But I never felt jealousy like it. Yeah. And that's only in a gym. So sure. Never mind a hit show. So sure. If somebody's getting all the publicity and all the attention and the, the, the main guy and the captain, everybody wants to be leader. But that... Sticking people in and selling stories, that's a rat, that ain't a leader. Yeah, he shouldn't no, be steering the shit. No. It's the one who stands strong and goes, you know what, you've said shit about me, but I'm going to just let you have your say. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, there comes yeah. a time I'm going to fire back because I ain't a fucking idiot. Yeah. You're going to step forward. Listen, I'll always step sure. forward, but people show their true colours. Yeah. And if I'm getting that shit in a fucking gym, but I don't really give a fuck about it, I was yeah. just doing it yeah. to make myself feel proud that I was worth sure. something, I was sure. working again, and people were little snakes. Never mind a, a, a hit show when people are selling stories. So it does make you question it that somebody has threw you under the bus along the way. You've been a target to maybe save their ass, save their job, sure. and you're the one. But again, you can't hold bitterness and anger towards people no, because it consumes you. Exactly. Yeah. So that people were actually selling stories about you. Yeah. 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 Even up to just recently, uh, uh, while while I was inside. The the, the stories I think I've been in the paper about four or five times since I was inside um, if, it, if it wasn't to promote the new gladiators that are coming out some some story but attached to those stories were former gladiators that were selling their stories and talking about talking shit about me 
<laughs> but you become the easy target. But you've gave them the ammunition with being in prison. Yeah. So everything yeah. they'll say they believe because yeah. you're the bad yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can understand that as well. Yeah. That they're getting paid little shit story, keeping their, their name in the the paper while discrediting you. But then I believe you'll be the one coming out okay. Yeah. If you just stay on the path, do the right thing, big things will happen again. Get a book out. I'm happy to have you on again. Sure. Promote your book. Yeah, that'd I've be got great. big contacts with other podcasters where you can go on their shows because the thing about these, these hit bigger numbers than the actual TV than the newspapers. Wow. All that shit's fizzled now. This is a new media. Yeah. Where people are getting a fair shout. But I've done 400 interviews. People are going to come on and talk pure shit and lie. That's My job is not to to be the judge and jury. Yeah. My job is just to guide the story where people can make their own assumptions. Yeah, yeah. And if people like you, they'll like you, they'll invest in you and they'll go, he's a good guy. So you can get your book out. You don't need the mainstream media. Don't get me wrong, there's good reporters as well who do their job and just wanted to do the right thing, but there's, there's snakes everywhere in yeah. life. Yeah, I'm sure there is. When do you think your book will be finished? Uh, not for a while, James. Uh, I did have I did have like 75% of it done before I went to prison. Um, but after losing the flat and everything that was in it, so that's gone. So I have to start it all over again, really. How did you lose the flat? Just from being nicked. Yeah. Ah, you need to come out and then get another flat. Yeah. You need to get any sheltered accommodation. Uh, right now, mm -hmm. I'm in the AP address, but I'm waiting to find. I go go and view a few places this week. Good. Yeah, that's all you can do. But listen, I wish you nothing but the best for the future. Hopefully, Cheers, you get your book out. Screw the nuts. Stay out of fucking prison. It's yeah. difficult though. It's okay me saying that because life is going okay. But when you're on your ass it's hard because you just want to survive and that's when the temptation kicks in yeah well used, you, yeah. Of money did take my fucking really. yeah, and yeah but the only thing is that sort of stuff will doing three years inside especially in your 60s it's not a good look no and you know this yourself you're not daft so for anybody watching that's maybe going through the same struggles that you're going through and just kind of trying to survive and stay out of prison what advice would you have for them just keep your chin up and chest out and the world will turn. Yes, my brother. Yeah. Would you like to finish up on anything? No, I'm good. Shadow, listen, for coming on a day and telling your story, you, see, you seem like a right decent guy. I wish you nothing but the best for the future. And for anybody watching, drop me a message if you can offer the big man work in London. You want to be a tattoo artist, yeah. maybe even a labouring job, something. You're willing sure. to take anything? Sure, sure anything. Yeah. then drop me a message and I'll pass it on and hopefully somebody can give them a chance but that's all we can do I hope to see you back home with your book but listen stay strong stay out of trouble and, and God bless you I brother yeah, yes thank you thank you